Pink 5 traffic anchor, Shantae Sumter, and New Day executive producer, Joseph Sutner. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Joseph, you gave Amity a little spring break. I, I did. did not, she earned it. I obviously did not get one. I uh, duly noted. Uh, do either of you get the urge to travel this time of year? And if so, what are your favorite spring break destinations? I get the urge to travel because I see everyone traveling. It's like everybody's off. So I'm like, man, what about me? So what about you? A Do beach. You go? Is, no, I mean, I'm here. Oh, this is your fantasy you're telling <laughs> yes, us. Yes, in my mind, I could use a spring break <laughs> yeah. and I could use a beach with a margarita. I'm right and, there with you. You know, yeah. you know. Yeah, so what fun. would be your what would be your ultimate spring break destination if you were to go? Ooh, maybe ultimate. One of those beaches, like in the Maldives or something, something oh, fancy. Oh, nice. Fancy. Yeah. Fancy, expensive I just, taste. Joseph? I just went to Phoenix for a wedding, and it's That's so nice. cold here still. I'm like, is it really spring yet? It feels like winter. We were outside, and I'm like, oh. Oh, it's cold in Phoenix. No, no, it's cold here. Oh, so cold I was like, here. I'm yeah, excited yeah, yeah. to get to some hot weather. And then I was in Phoenix, and it was 96 degrees, and I'm like, oh, well, gosh. maybe that's too much for me. So yeah, I'm just ready for it to be actually like feel like spring in Seattle. Yeah, it, and you do not want to be uh, in Phoenix in the summer. That's for sure. Um, I don't. I, yeah, I don't get out much in the spring. I don't get out much <laughs> ever. Uh, but if I were to, I, I don't need to go anywhere in the spring because I think Washington State is so beautiful. The yeah. Northwest is so beautiful. So I'm happy to go out and do some hiking this time of year. It's great. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. Well, today's too cold, but yeah. usually it's not too cold either. Uh, it is not too cold ever for ice cream. There is ice cream. When I was a kid, they used to say, oh, you know, my parents would only take us to the ice cream place in the summer. No more. It is, it is year round. Salt and Straw's new ice cream flavors come from the imagination of kids. So they had this contest. They said, write about uh, the weirdest flavors that you can think of. And they ended up having two local winners. And we're going to actually taste test the uh, flavors of the two local winners, which are. Uh, <laughs> the ice cream of Moo is the name of the, the first one. It's a silky chocolate ice cream dashed with a touch of salt, studded with clusters of candied mm. uh, oh, caramel cashews and hunks of maraschino cherry laced chocolate ganache. Yum. Okay, ice cream of this, the you Moo like one, that's not bad. You know, it's good if you mix the two, actually. It's quite tasty. Joseph, you're jumping ahead. I know. Sorry. You don't want to mix the two. In the <laughs> second one, what was this? Um, okay, so the second one is the pink one is Rosie the Pink Flamingo. It's okay. uh, pink everywhere, all the time, even down to her favorite treats. What's great is the kids wrote these descriptions. Okay. And some of them were very fantastic, had stories around them and everything. And um, so let me tell you what's in Rosie the Pink Flamingo. It is uh, bright strawberry ice cream, house-made gummy bears, and loads of pink sprinkles. Okay, the kids did a good job. You know, sometimes when mm -hmm. you hear about kids making flavors, I wasn't I mm -hmm. wasn't sure, to be honest. No offense to the kids, but <laughs> <laughs> it it actually isn't bad. This mm. pink one is it gives me like a sherbet sherbet. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I can get the word out, mm -hmm. you all know what I'm trying Don't to say. Don't get it out wrong. We could be in trouble with the, the FCC that's why. folks. I'm oh. done with it. So it's one of those types of flavors, but not bad. Not yeah, bad and I knew when Salt and Straw talked to us about this, they always have such tasty flavors. I knew that this would not let us down. Well, go um, ahead. And you can keep eating, but we're going to move on with topics. And by <laughs> the way, Joseph, I stand corrected. They they are really good when you mix them. Yes. Mm -hmm. So did either of you get tricked by this April Fool's oh, tweet? Man. I know I did about a pedestrian-only zone around the Pike Place Market. It's actually, you know, it's not a crazy idea at all. That's why so many people were fooled. They said, let's take Pike Place Market and make that entire sort of the, the hyper-local neighborhood around Pike Place Market, make it a pedestrian zone. Practically is already. Yeah, I have to say the urbanist, who is the one that made this tweet, they were mm -hmm. genius for doing this, I think, because this has been something that people in Seattle, urbanists and just regular people like have been talking about. Yeah. And they were so smart to make that tweet because they tweeted it so deadpan as if it were real. So many people were like, finally. And I think that's what they were wanting to prove. They wanted to show all the likes all the retweets yeah. to show how much support there is for this. And, you know, I think some people are opposed to this idea, but I think the people who want to get cars out, they're not saying all cars. People still know that the farmers need to make deliveries. Mm -hmm. It needs to be ADA compliant. But most pedestrians there don't really like a bunch of cars driving through there. 
and I know I don't, and I also feel like drivers who accidentally turn in there also wish they weren't there. Right. So I, it's puzzling to me why there's so much resistance to making this a little more of a pedestrian friendly zone. Yeah, the only people are, the, who are driving there right now are driving by mistake probably yeah. anyway. Yeah, exactly. wish, they, wish they weren't. Shante, do you have anything to add to that? Do you have any strong feelings about that? I, I agree with what Joseph said. Mm -hmm. I, um, I know when sometimes when I'm going through there on Saturdays it is a little distracting with a whole bunch mm -hmm. of cars so I wouldn't mind if they weren't there. I guess it was something I didn't think about about that much, but yeah, yeah I don't mind well, that. And one thing from the pandemic that Seattle did was make those stay healthy streets where they mm -hmm. closed a bunch of streets around the city um, to be pedestrian only, except for like local access, obviously. But one in my neighborhood, Beacon Hill, they decided to make permanent, which I thought was really cool to let more people just, you know, enjoy the streets without having to fear of, you know, getting hit yeah. by a car or something. Okay, well, let's talk about something a little more important than pedestrian safety. <laughs> Pet weddings. They are growing in popularity. Some people are paying as much as $25,000 for them. Uh, would you, I don't know, stage a pet wedding or go to a pet wedding? I would go to one. Why not? If, Somebody wants to, it sounds <laughs> like a crazy good time. If my dog could tell me she found love, <laughs> I will definitely give her a pet wedding. Okay. Twenty-five thousand dollars is a bit much, but I love parties. I love any excuse yeah. to dress up and go to a party. So if someone wants to invite me to their pet wedding, I would mm -hmm. prefer to come to the reception. But yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, the the whole yeah. ceremony part is just gets so boring, you know, with two pets. Uh, that is a lot of money to spend on a pet wedding. Um, so I guess if the people who are throwing this have all this extra money, that's great for them. Um, but I would I would never do that personally. But I would attend also. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm. I would definitely go. I would not spend twenty five thousand dollars though for a pet wedding. I don't even spend. I don't spend twenty five thousand dollars for a car or even a house, right, for that matter. I'm, I'm fairly cheap. Okay, Joseph and Shante are gonna stick around for more Hot Topics and more sugar, you guys. Uh, we'll be trying seven, that's right, seven of the new Peeps flavors.